Hey, it's Naked Chef Sandra, and today I'm making Cuban beef picadillo. Always wear your apron. Safety and cleanliness first. Now, I have a few things um, that are working right now, like I heated water so that I can have my beef broth ready like I just have like these little jelly cubes um, that make it and you have to have hot water for that and it calls for a cup of that so I'm gonna do that mm, a little over a cup because the uh, beef cube takes up a little tiny bit of space okay and I have my pan over here heating um, to brown the beef. So first, before we brown the beef, because it's going to call for us to do things as we are browning the beef, we have um, all our naked ingredients right here. And it calls for a, a large diced onion and you need 17 and a half ounces of extra lean ground beef, which I am using ground bison because it's lean and I think it'll taste good. And you need 14 ounces of fresh tomatoes, three cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of ground cumin. You need some dried oregano, chili, and olives and Raisins, tomato paste, a cup of beef stock, balsamic vinegar, red pepper, which I'm using a green pepper. And I mean, there's no real taste difference or actual difference besides the color. And you need zucchini and Yukon gold potatoes um, or another waxy variety sea salt, black pepper to taste, and cilantro. Now, I, let's see, I have potatoes. I need my pepper. But I have um, less than what it calls for, because it calls for nine ounces, but I'm only using like three small potatoes so that there's not as many potatoes and it's more keto friendly because I cook for my boyfriend. And so instead of so many potatoes or any potatoes at all, you can use acorn squash. Now acorn squash is a little sweet, so you wanna um, maybe add some cayenne to make it a bit spicy or something to balance that sweetness. Um, and first I am going to keep my heat on kind of like medium lowish so that like it's still like heated and it doesn't take much time to heat back up while I'm prepping my food items. I need to dice my onion and it calls for one large onion which like the uh, sweet onions work really well for that because they're huge. But, and I have kind of a half of a small sweet onion here, but since I have half of a small one, I got a really small yellow onion just to kind of make it into one large onion as it calls for. Now, I already have my sweet onion peeled and cut so that it's ready to dice. I'm going to show you how to dice an onion. First, you cut off the end. Throw it away. And then the knob on the top, you want to cut it in half. And then you take the peel, and usually there's like a thin layer of like slimy onion or something underneath. That you can peel off or you can just peel off the first layer of the onion to make it easier to peel off all the skin mm. 
Okay. Then to dice that, you want to take your knife and you kind of just like go in at angles all the way around it. And I start on the opposite side of me and you go at angles like um, almost all the way to the other edge of the onion where the knot is so that you have as much room as possible to get as much onion as you can. And then you go the other way and you make little dices across that way and I kind of did it until I couldn't cut anymore and there's just that nub and just throw it away. So we're going to cut up garlic and you can mince it. I have a nifty little thing like called a garlic press that you can use to mince your garlic. Um, it makes it really fine and kind of just mushes it out these holes that makes it so it's mint. And but I'm not gonna do that. I like kind of ch chunky garlic, so I am just going to cough the ends where it grows out of the stalks per se. And then after they're all cut off, you want to smash your garlic so that you can get it out of the shell easier and you turn it upside down so that the curved side is down and just take your knife and smash it. And so that makes it easier to take out of the shell as well as it makes it easier to take the uh, stem out of the middle that I guess it grows from. So this is what we're doing. We deshell the garlic, and then now that it's smashed, it's easier to get to the middle. And you just take out like this little green thing that's like a stalk in the middle. And it's kind of just bitter, and you don't really want to eat it because it doesn't taste good. I mean, some may say that um, you don't know the difference between doing it and not doing it, but I don't know. I just like to do things right, so that's what I'm doing. And the uh, recipe says to use three cloves of garlic, but I am using four because I love garlic. And these are pretty huge cloves of garlic. I mean, you may not have these huge of cloves of garlic, so you can use as much or as little as you want, depending on, I guess, your like for garlic. Mm. But I'm using four because I love garlic. I like a lot of garlic in my stuff. I'm Italian, so I eat a lot of garlicky stuff. Okay, I'm going to finish that off, and then when you chop up your garlic, there's no real order or way to chop up garlic since it's all PC and it's not like uniform. So, you kind of just like hack it up. And as soon as I'm done doing all that, there, I'll show you. You bring it all together, make sure all the skins and trash is out of there so that you're not eating skins or middle parts or whatever you don't want in there. And then you kind of just like hack it up. At first you might like want to, um, you put your hand at the end of your knife to keep it steady and then you kind of just rock it back and forth and go back and forth. And then after it's chopped up a bit, you bring it back all back together so that you can keep chopping it and it's not getting away from you. And you do that again. And then what I like to do, I mean, and this might get a little messy, but you know, 
you're cooking and cooking ain't necessarily a clean job I would say so you just do this and you chop it like in all different directions so that it gets up real tiny or you can leave it big if you like I just like to get it tiny That's just a quick way to chop your garlic and make it small. And it gets a little messy, but whatever. Up. Now that I have the garlic all chopped, now that I have the garlic all chopped, we're going to start peel and cut our tomatoes. I turned our heat back up to like medium around six, and um, then I'm going to throw in the meat with the onions and the garlic here in a sack. But first I'm going to peel the tomatoes, because tomatoes take a little time to peel, and cut, and core. So this is how you core a tomato. You just take your um, paring knife, and like kind of dig a hole around it in the middle. And I'm going to do that to all my tomatoes. Mm. And these are Roma tomatoes. I think they're the best. Uh, you can get off the vine ripened tomatoes or whatever too. But I think just Roma tomatoes um, have the best um, firmness and um, ability to cut them and dice them. And I like their taste too. Okay, then you just take a peeler and you go around the top first of the tomato to kind of start it. And then you just go from there and you peel down. It's easier to peel down the peel of the tomato after you've already started like something that has revealed its flesh. It's just easier that way. I'm going to peel all these tomatoes and I'm going to dice them. Okay, now I'm going to edit my meat. I'm going to have my onions and garlic. Now you just do this. And you take your knife and you just scrape it all in. And I know like everybody does stuff differently and it's just like I don't like seasoning my stuff like after it's already cooked. So I'm just gonna do some salt and pepper real quick. Just a little bit to taste to give it like some flavor while it's cooking. Maybe like uh, half a teaspoon of pepper and uh, like a teaspoon of salt. Maybe not even that much salt because the uh, olives that you put in later are salty in themselves. So I'm just going to turn it around. Mm. 
I'm just going to cook that until the uh, meat is brown and the uh, onions are kind of translucent. So, to dice my tomatoes, I'm going to cut them in half. And I'm going to kind of just like carve out like the seeds that are in the middle right there. Just like this. So I don't have to deal with them. And you kind of just got this shell of a tomato. Because I don't want to deal with seeds, so... You can choose to leave your season if you like. Leave them whole and dice them up. Um, as is, but I just think it makes it a little harder. Okay. There's that. And um, the recipe calls for 14 ounces of tomatoes. You can use canned tomatoes as well, but it just has a slightly different flavor that comes out instead of using fresh. And um, I got about a pound of tomatoes and I knew that I was gonna be tearing out like this flesh and the seeds and peeling them and such. So that takes a little weight off of it in itself. And so I kind of calculated just like to not have that. Um, it'll probably break down to like about 14 ounces or so in the end. Okay. I have my heat on like medium. I turned it down to five. And I'm just gonna keep like stirring it here and there to get everything browned evenly. tomatoes are just kind of the same way as onions a little bit. You just slice one way and then as soon as you're done slicing one way you turn it and slice the other. You can slice them as big or as little as you like depending on how you like to eat tomatoes or how chunky you want it. Oh, maybe you gotta hide tomatoes from your kids or something. And, like, they don't like tomatoes, but you want them to still get their fruits or whatever in. So, like, do it up. Chop them real fine. Or however you like it. So, now, I'm going to add the tomatoes to the pot. And you should um, just let them cook in there until they start to break down a little bit. And once that occurs, you are going to add the potatoes, which I'm going to peel and cut right now. Oh, you don't have to peel your potatoes. I just like to make sure there's no blemishes or like pits or whatever that can be on there that I don't want in my food. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dice them up kind of small. 
thing. I just got like three um, small Yukon gold potatoes. You want a waxy variety of potato. And um, I am, there's not really any imperfections on these because I'm pretty picky about my produce. So I'm just going to cut them as they are. Maybe like peel a couple of the, there might be an imperfection or two. But, you know, I check them out. Make sure they don't have pits or like weird things that look gross or unappeasing. Some of them have eyes. They're called eyes because they look like little eyes. They're like these things. They're like little divots. And make sure your potatoes don't have like brown spots or whatever else they could possibly have. And since they still have skin on, you want to rinse them. And I am going to dice them. I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut it in slivers. Oops. Put that back in there. And um, once I come in slivers, you can kind of divide them in half so that they set up like that. And you can come in half like the other way again. And you can come like the long way. So that they're little dices of potatoes. And that's how they look. So I decided not to use my third potato because uh, this is kind of a lot of potatoes for like what I got in there. You know what I'm saying? Same. And it's not that much. It's only like a pound of ground beef. I mean, in the recipe, it's supposed to be 17 and a half. But, you know, that's not really that much. And then, like, the rest of the ingredients to kind of, like, be more, um, I guess, not overpowering the entire thing, like, uh, you don't want to have that many ingredients in there. Or that much of the ingredients. So I'm going to put it in there. Put the potatoes in there. The tomatoes have cooked down a little bit. We can use that potato another day. And these potatoes will cook. And that's a pretty good amount of potatoes in there. Like, it spreads out evenly, and it's pretty well um, spread throughout the entire thing. You know, whatever. And now, I also am doing some... Uh, butternut squash. Now, you can choose to do this if you like. And you can use a peeler to peel the outside of your butternut squash. Which isn't too bad. Sometimes it might take a lot of time depending on how fast you can do it. How thick the outside is. There we go. And I'm just going to do that. And all around. Mmm. You want to kind of like show the oranginess of the butternut squash. You don't want like too much white going on because that just means you've got like the outer shell, the skin with it. 
and the skin is bitter and you don't want to taste that so it's gross so leave it out and just peel that down until you get to that orange color It's all orange. I'm going to cut off the ends. That's it. Just like where I stopped peeling, I guess. I'm going to slice it. Put your hand on the top of the blade for stability. And it's got like these seeds in there. Use a spoon, like a big spoon. Scoop them out. And you can cut it in half. Mm -hmm. mm. There you go. And the seeds aren't like that filled through with the whole entire thing, so they're pretty easy to get. I'm gonna get this one. And you kinda just like take it and you just scrape it into the trash. And that's how it look at, looks afterwards. Now I'm probably gonna only use half of this butternut squash. I might use a little more, but who knows? We'll see what we feel like, depending on how much um, we get out of it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the potatoes. And since I cut it in half, I'm gonna cut it in strips. So now you got these strips, right? And if you keep them stacked like you did with the potato, they're easier to cut. Hmm, do I want that? I don't know if I want that, whatever. So then you just cut them in more strips. After you're done cutting them in strips that way, you kind of just cut the ends until they're all cut up. And they're in little dices. And these will go in at the same time as the potatoes typically. Um, so like, uh, um, they don't take as long to cook, so they can go in just after as well. That's what I'm doing right now. So there's the butternut squash. I am going to put it in there along with the potatoes. And after you do that, you're going to put in the um, cumin and oregano and chili powder. And since we are using butternut squash, we are going to put a little cayenne in there. Mm -hmm. And you use a half tablespoon of dried oregano. And 
and I have these nifty little measuring spoons that like adjust to whatever size you want. I have a tablespoon that goes from a tablespoon down to a teaspoon, and I have a teaspoon that goes from a teaspoon down to an eighth of a teaspoon. They're nifty. They're from Pampered Chef. And I need a half a tablespoon of dried oregano and a tablespoon. It doesn't say a half a tablespoon on here, so you gotta know your measurements. And it takes three teaspoons to make a whole tablespoon. So I'm gonna notch it down to one and a half teaspoons, which is a half a tablespoon. I'm gonna put it in there. And what else? A tablespoon of ground cumin and a teaspoon of chili powder. Okay, so it wants a whole tablespoon of cumin. Damn. This is like cumin food. All right, I'm just going to dump it over the sink because there's not really anything left in here. And it'll, like, give me whatever to uh, shake it off. There we go. Whole tablespoon of cumin in there. And uh, a teaspoon of chili powder. So we're going to use our teaspoon and notch it all the way down. And the chili powder right here. Mm -hmm. Whole teaspoon of that. And then I think I'm just gonna do like maybe hmm, half a teaspoon of cayenne. I'll make it a little hefty. Make it a little spicy. You can balance out that uh, butternut squash in there. There's my little shrimp. Oh, that's trash now. Okay. There we go. And you're going to stir it all up. Make it coat evenly. So here we are. That's her pot. And that's how it looks. It's all seasoned and there's butter squash in there and now uh, the potatoes and onions and garlic. Then what do they want us to do? So then we're gonna add in the peppers, olives, raisins, tomato paste and balsamic vinegar and stock. So, it says 20 of these, where are they? Manzanilla olives with like the pimentos in them. It says 20 of them. Now I am not a fan of olives. So, I am going to hide them from myself. Okay. So to hide these for myself a little bit, I'm just going to cut them in quarters so that they're just smaller pieces and I don't really realize that they're there. Because, I don't know, maybe I'll like it mixed in this stuff, but I don't really like all of this by themselves. But you always got to try new things because uh, your taste buds change every seven years. So, I don't know, you may like something that you didn't like before. And they got like these nice little hatches in the bottom so I can cut them exactly in like quarters. Now even though it calls for a red pepper, I am doing green pepper because that's what I got. And it only calls for like a half one. So 
The way that you de-seed and cut peppers is that you just cut off the sides. And I'm cutting off these sides so that I just have like half the pepper. And I'll just like, you know, do whatever with the other half, store it, use it for other stuff, etc. Mm -hmm. Pulling out the membranes. Like, I don't want any membranes or any seeds in my peppers. So I'm cutting them out. Even though they're just bell peppers and membranes don't mean shit. I don't know. Some, I don't know. They're kind of gross. Then you can turn them and you just fly some long ways so that you can dice them up afterwards. And then you come the other way, you gather them all together, and start slicing the ends until you can't slice them anymore. I guess you're supposed to like curl your fingers and slice it this way, but you know, slice it however you find easiest, I guess. And at some point you're not going to be able to hold on to them anymore, so you just kind of cut them. Like as you can. There's that. Okay, nice peppers. Then I'm gonna put the peppers and the olives and the raisins it wants us to have. Hmm. One ounce of raisins. I like golden raisins. It says to get these sultana raisins, which I don't know what the fuck those are. So, I just got raisins that I like. And one ounce is approximately two tablespoons. So, I'm just going to put two tablespoons of raisins in there. Maybe a little overflow. Whatever, a little extra. Whatever. Put whatever you want in there. You can customize whatever recipe you like to however you like it. That's what I do. I want a little more than an ounce in there, so fuck them. Alright, and then it wants the half diced pepper and the 20 um, green olives. And I'll just give it a stir so I get them to like cook. Okay. And then you add two tablespoons of tomato paste. So I got my tablespoon right here. And I got the tomato paste, so I'm gonna open it. And it doesn't have to be exact, it can be more or less, whatever. Just take your tablespoon, stick it in there, grab some out, pop it in. Okay. That's it. Then you also put your cup of stock in there. I stirred mine, but it's going to have to blend more as I stir it in here. Mm. You can have beef stock or chicken stock if you like. I'm going to just stir it all up so it all gets melted together. 
and the steam will cook all these vegetables over this short period of time. You might want to turn your heat up like just to like six or seven to like a semi medium high just so that it like cooks a little faster and the steam goes and you want it to reduce um, for a little while so higher heat will help that speed up. Alright. There's that. Now I'm going to turn it up to seven. Let it reduce a little while longer. Let's see. And uh, don't forget your splash of balsamic vinegar. Just a splash. Nothing more. Nothing less. Maybe more. Maybe less. Just however you like it. But I think balsamic vinegar is delicious. So I put a little more than a, a splash in there. Maybe like a tablespoon. Okay. And stir it. Stir it all up. No, doesn't that just look gorgeous? And it's good. It's got all sorts of healthy stuff in there. And it's all natural. And nothing comes from a can besides the uh, tomato paste, I guess. It's always good to buy fresh ingredients. It's better for you. I don't know. I can't stand people that buy canned ingredients all the time because I don't use canned stuff myself. It's kind of gross. Tastes different. Sometimes it gets a metally taste. I don't prefer that. Okay, while that's cooking, I'm gonna get my zucchini. It only calls for like a half a zucchini. I'm gonna cut off the top and cut off the bottom. And since my zucchini is a little icky, like I'm gonna do like some type of fancy shit that isn't really fancy, it's simple. It just looks fancy. Um, and I'm gonna peel three stripes from my zucchini. And then when it's chopped up, it looks fancy. Same, just like that. Three stripes peeled. Okay, then they only want a half a zucchini. Which, I don't know why. Zucchini is delicious. I might use the whole thing. Who knows? I'm gonna cut... Uh, actually, I'm going to cut, like, it in thirds. Just like that. And then, cut those thirds into strips. And then I'm going to cut all these strips into dices. I'm going to cut them this way. Got all the strips facing one way. And then just chop them up. And you just want them chopped up. Here we are. There's your zucchini. It's all diced and it's pretty. And then like, um, after a little while, let's see, that's a mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it says bring to a boil, then reduce heat and simmer for 15 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender and the liquid has reduced down. If the liquid hasn't reduced down after 15-20 minutes, then the heat's too low. 
So you want about maybe like four, maybe three. But it's boiling now. And I've been reducing it. And uh, I'm turning the heat down. And it reduces down and it's not liquidy anymore. You can see it like bubbling a little bit. You just don't want it to be bubbling like majorly with pools of liquid after it's done. You know, and I cut up the zucchini. And then during your last five minutes, you're gonna stir in the zucchini because it takes like pretty much no time to cook. And um, it'll cook in that five minutes and it'll be heat enough because it's uh, simmering. And then um, you are going to salt and pepper it to your taste, which I already salt and peppered my meat and my onions when I first started cooking them because you're always supposed to salt um, vegetables, onions and stuff like when you cook them, when you saute them. And plus like I like my meat seasoned like when it's cooking, not like after it cooks because then it tastes, you taste like weird meat flavor and it's bland and I like the seasoning to be cooked in. So, we have our zucchini um, cut up. I might do a little more zucchini, you know what? Because I like zucchini. Like, okay. Um, so, I'm going to cut this. Did I cut it in half and then thirds? Yeah, I think I cut it in half and then thirds. I'm going to leave that over there. I'm just going to cut up like maybe another quarter of the zucchini. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If some of the pieces seem a little big, cut them in half. Like mine kind of do. But no big deal. Scrape them all up with your hand and put them on their little plate for now until we're ready to throw them in. And I am using the timer kind of. I've been looking at the clock and I started simmering it at like 6.40 so it'll be done by 7 o'clock. And this is cilantro. My boyfriend says cilantro is unloyal. Because, I guess, yeah, you pick it off and, like, you don't cut it up with all the sims or something. I don't know. I just cut it however the fuck I feel. So, whatever. I don't care if cilantro is on the oil or not. But this is a uh, Cuban dish. And a lot of Latino foods have cilantro in them. And they tell you to use the cilantro to put on top of your dish um, after it is done. So I'm just gonna like lightly chop it so that you still have biggerish pieces, but not so big that they're whole leaves or whatever, you know. And I use the stems and stuff, it's whatever. Hmm. There's that. I'm just going to give it a light chop one way and then a light 
top the other way. Yeah, so it's kind of still biggish here and there, but um, it's not um, all small. You just have it to garnish and give it, give your plate some extra flavoring. I guess it just brings out the flavor of the dish or something. I don't know. I don't know what cilantro does. My mom thinks it tastes like soap, which I think it kind of does. But it's okay. You got it. It'll be good. And every once in a while, you should stir your pot so it doesn't get burnt on the bottom. I mean, granted, it's on low and it won't burn on the bottom, most likely, but the liquid is reducing and it's getting less liquid. So the less liquid that it gets, the drier that it gets, I think the more likely. It is susceptible to burning. Okay, so I added the zucchini. It's like the last five minutes, maybe a little bit more. Um, always taste your food before you serve it or before you do anything on it. I'm just going to taste it to see if it needs more salt or pepper or whatever. Let's see, I want down here. Mmm. Mm hmm A little more salt and pepper could do. Just a little bit, like, maybe a um, quarter to a half a teaspoon of pepper. And like a uh, half a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon maybe. Just a little bit. Not too much because there's olives in there that are salty. And see, it's kind of a goulashy thing. I'm serving it up with blueberries because I believe in eating balanced diets. And um, that's really good. So you should try it.